going down on the Akashic record, so just be aware of that. So watch your words carefully. Yes. They'll be raided, folks. Don't say anything off the wall. No, I don't want to be raided. Joshua, the, the battle of Jericho. Jericho, Jericho. Joshua, the battle of Jericho. And the walls came tumbling down. Class. Class. Uh, there's well, still a great class difference in this country. Like, I think every one of us would be very comfortable in a riverside church, you know, every Sunday or every weekend. Even, even Mr. Cuomo would be comfortable in a riverside church. But if he would go through the side streets of Harlem or Bedford Stuyvesant, or uh, Calcutta. Rango's, I mean, uh, Charlie Barron's area, he wouldn't be comfortable. And uh, if you read today's Times, we were talking about how unsuccessful he is with the average black man and woman. Well, he's successful, but would not get to it. He's not going to get it. But in Riverside Church, he might find himself quite uh, comfortable. But you know, he said this week he was a tea party. What do you mean by that? Tea party people were saying he's a tea party. But I wonder if we could ask if Scott Pellegrino is here. Could we ask Scott? Scott, uh, you were there with Mr. Ahmad Zinnajan, who is the vet noir de jour of the world. Everybody stayed down. And he said, and you had, him, you had 200 people there. And it was like old home week for all the intellectuals, Ramsey Clark and all the people and everything. And what did you think? What did you think overall of that? And then also, the things he's been saying about 9-11 truth from Tehran and so forth. What do you think of the man? What's your impression? Um, I actually, I, I hadn't heard that he uh, said anything about 9-11 truth. What yeah, you it's about? there. I got well, it. He said, he said that uh, uh, there's a good portion of the world that doesn't believe the official story. And he wants to do it. And the United States political class was involved in doing that, like a burning of the Reichstag. I think the CIA is somehow, CIA is somehow behind the truth. So. You do? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I so think he that, said it. I think they, I, he, he said that? Yeah, he did. Oh, he said the CIA yes, was behind the truth. Yes, he said they the should have a United Nations investigation instead of that 9-11 truth thing that they came out for. Oh, because well, I, think the, really I think the 9-11 thing, the thing was just like a sponge. It sponges up lots of good people who are going to spend um, 30 or 40 years of the rest of their lives going over this 9-11 stuff. And uh, it's going to be a big waste of time, just like the people who pay attention to the Kennedy assassination. And we're obsessed with that for 30 or 40 years. Um, well, it doesn't even, even matter for an investigation. It wouldn't even matter if it's true. Every, Bush, 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 and, uh, Bush and company have done so much worse than that anyway. Um, 3,000 people is nothing compared to what they killed in Iraq. Right. Yeah, One and a half million. Why not pay attention campaign. to the stuff that, that is, we all know that they did and it's clear and above board? Why pay attention to a conspiracy thing, which even if it were, you know, it's never going to be true. It's never going to be proven. Anyway. Oh, I would say that. I don't know how well, there's impossible. But I go it's with never, you by saying it hasn't been proven by now. It's not, it's not going to be proven. Are you now. saying go with the things that are more available, the things that um, are more in public attention? Everyone that who's spending time on nine more truth mouth. is wasting their time. You think so? Totally wasting their time. He said that. I'm glad he said that. Much he chagrin, said. And, and Mr. Obama said he's going over the, you know, and he's pushing, pushing, pushing. Uh, what do you think of him overall? Um, well, and what he said and so forth in that meeting. He 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 put on a good show. Uh, he he, he smart. Show. I want to I want to comment on that at the end too. Okay. Um, well, he, he he put on a good show. He seems like a decent guy, but you know, people who read know what he's really up to, and he's not. I'm not saying he's necessarily worse than our leaders, but he's. Uh, but and he may it may be possible that he's the best that you can hope for in that kind of situation in, in Iran to, uh, to, uh, to be in charge. Um, he seemed uh, a little receptive to what I suggested. I, I, I told him two things. I told him that um, because I'd seen him on the Charlie Rose show the night before. Yeah, I watched that. It was very good. He was very good. Of, yeah, and he, he was very good on that. And he, um, so I said to him, because it was clear to me from what I read that he wasn't familiar with it, I 
said he should check out a book called The Unspoken Alliance. Do you guys know about that book? It's, it's uh, about South Africa and Israel. Who's the writer? Um, you mean South Africa, Sasha, Africa something dealing with part of the end of the end of the end This is a guy, every, a lot of people know about Israel and South Africa and the apartheid government's uh, yes. relationship over the years, but um, this guy has far more details than anyone else had right. before. He got into the South African archives, which no one ever did before. Mm -hmm. And he's the one who revealed, it was, it was in the Guardian newspaper, that uh, Shimon Perez was trying to uh, get Israel to sell South Africa a nuclear bomb in 1973. He did verify? Hmm? Did oh, verify? this is totally verified. The only reason it didn't, uh, the only reason it didn't happen, which is funny to me, especially since I'm part Jewish, is that uh, they couldn't get enough, South Africa did, didn't want to pay enough money for it. That's why the deal didn't happen. Um, but he, uh, but anyway, this this has all the details about all the arms deals and it proves that uh, there was no country in the world that was more friendly to to the apartheid government there, and not and with the specific strain of the whites there who were directly connected to Nazis. Um, and uh, anyway, it's a fascinating book, and I, I think since he you know, he's going to talk about Israel, it would be good if he mentioned that book. So, so. Attention. The other thing I said was that he should make a proposal to America that um, as a goodwill proposal and a way to maybe build up a relationship uh, that is that both America and uh, Iran will both give up their death penalties. They'll stop stoning... I, I, stoning people. They'll stop stoning uh, women. Um, the repression of labor. Hmm? Well, I'll be happy if he. Yeah. I, I'd be happy if he just. just, so just, 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 just when they stop, when they stop hanging gay people, I will prove that we did each other. Okay. But like I said, he may, he may be on the left side of his element. You know, I don't. It's hard to tell. He seemed, you know, he seemed, he didn't seem uncomfortable among. No, he's very comfortable. He's very comfortable. Um, so he seemed, you know, I don't know if it would ever happen, even if he proposed it, I doubt it. Certainly Obama would never agree. I don't know whether he says it comes out of his mouth, it's not the truth. You're talking says, about Ahmadinejad, right? Yeah, the president Thank of Iran. Yeah. Yeah, it's he, the repressive forces within Iran. I, didn't, I couldn't go to the, I couldn't in good faith attend the session because of the repressive forces that run in the election. It's too dangerous, and I'm telling that to the public. You want but to I do right? think well, we need to be very clear that we cannot allow the United States of America to launch another Iraq. We can't well, they're, they're forces that want to do that. They I want, know. You know, yeah, they, well, they, uh, they want to wipe them no, out. He's an existential threat. Obama is not on, the, on this kick where he's got to go into uh, Iran. It's not going to happen that quickly. He wants to have diplomacy. And uh, we'll see what happens with it. If Rahm Emanuel finds that, that it can help the Democrats in the next election, election for us to bomb Iran, it could help, uh, yeah. it could help, um, it could help Obama, or just, if it just, or just if it helps he's Israel. But this I'm could be his last deed. He's leaving okay. in like six months or something. I want a question, no, Cody. Right away. I want a sure. question, Cody. What do you mean I want to take about for, the uh, election? What about the election? Iran percent. No, no, no. The election in Iran. Are you running for Senate? He oh, won I'm the not election. running in Iran. I was saying that. No, he won I'm, the election. No, I know he ran this election. Not that okay. I'm running for Senate. I, I know that, but you said about about Adinija, that he, the election issues you didn't want to go to because of repression. No, no, no. It had to do with my running for an office. What does that got something to do with him? Since you're talking about repression of women. Because what he's doing, if, I, if, I, if I'm seen at a table with him, he did. Yeah. We know what the press does. I don't understand what, I can't understand what she's saying. She's, she's saying that if she, sa if she sits down with Ahmadinejad that the press would write all kinds of different oh, things. Oh, you're a campaign. That's right. because the propaganda is all ginned up. But he won the election. Well, I know he won his election. Okay. That's my question. That's interesting. No, no, no. She still has he won, so, so, he won so it wasn't a stolen election. He didn't win his election. It wasn't a stolen election. He's a progressive. He gets money to the people. And the people voted for him. <laughs> and what you had up in that, that, all that green revolution or whatever they're talking about, are, are yuppies. They're all got Gucci bags and they're, they're bourgeois. But he's got a lot of the people, 70 million people. And you give the people money and you give the people houses and things, they don't have all the say in the press and everything, but he won. He well, won the election. I'm not so what's our what's a, why don't we ever call that to attention? He won an election. It'd be like Reagan saying you didn't win 
I went in and all the, the hubbub. And so people were breaking the law. Yeah, you know that. He won an election. He claimed. He didn't claim. He won it. He won an election by by destroying the other people. That's what he did. Any dissenters he had knocked off. What are you talking about? That's there's no record of that. In anything, there was actually an investigation. We were such propaganda directed in the in the mistakes and. Surely, you know, that there were mistakes, but the mistakes were not of that magnitude to right. overturn the, the results. So if you go with 60-40, and maybe there was a margin of error, maybe plus, minus, like, two, 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 two or three percent. And those, those nine, people nine that are... side of that election was a, was a, a good choice anyway. The what? Neither side... Yeah, but it, it's not really a plus. It's their democratic process. Well, I'll tell you one thing. Yeah, he's a smart fellow. He's very smart. Say he's it's really smart. Democracy. Like he's, very he's, good. Good. he's very good on camera, and he's very self-possessed, and he's got. And he answered the road thing was great. You're all in for But didn't but, 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 but didn't he didn't he host that Holocaust denial festival? Or I don't know anything about denial. So They're talking about this. Research. 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 No, uh, let it come up. Please, let it come he lies like a rug. Yeah. No, but he was, I think he was involved with that. He well, was involved I, with yeah, but that's not denial. That's not denial. It's a question of wanting to look at it. Well, it right. looks like he says it's a, and it's a historical doing is, event. Is there anybody else in the world that's tweaking the great American empire? China's just a running dog. Saudi Arabia's a running dog to our American empire that we've got all over the world. The problem in the world is the American empire. Not and the lack of vision by the American society, and it's America that's got all those weapons. And they don't have a vision. They don't have a vision. They don't have a vision. The United States is the problem, and he's somebody who's calling those problems into attention of the world. 60, 70 percent of the people in the region he did that, they had a survey. The United States survey, very accurate. They said, ask the question, who are the major threats to the world? United States and Israel. That's what the people in the region say. That's a whole bunch. That's a billion people. And that's meaningful. That's and he brings least. it up. And the problem is the United States of America. Well, that would they be don't a, have a vision. All the West Asia, including Persia. China is a running saying, dog. Are you saying, they just all adopted our system. They haven't come up with something other. Who has? Nobody has. At least he's challenging us at a fundamental level and it's a provocative. Okay, and Anybody else know. in the world doing that effectively? Gaddafi did for a while, but he's gone. Uh, the guy in Venezuela, wasn't oh, he? Chavez, okay, Chavez. Okay. He would be in that. Or Evo Morales, maybe. That. He's been challenged about time to challenge. But they're already, being sucked. Sucked. they're already being sucked it's into down. the it's system it's that it's is not adequate to what the future requires for the planet. Mm -hmm. We don't have a system. Our system is going to melt down. Keynes was right. They, you get a, an algorithm to get rid of 10, 100,000 people, there go the jobs. The only way you have distributing income to the poor serfs on the estate of the people who own all the assets is to give them a job and give them money. The way to distribute money and demand is not going to be there to clear the market. So we don't have a system that the future requires. Did our economic. Did you guys see the, the film, one of the stones from south of the border? I haven't it's seen it yet. Was it good? No, I was not recommend it. Really? Yeah? He's yeah. yeah. got a new one out about Wall Street. I haven't yeah. seen that either. Anyway, I, I kind of like the guy. I think he's really interesting and he's just putting it to, that's why I like the Barton. Barton doesn't go into the court, the fellow on the drugs. He doesn't go into the Watch court. Me. The guy, our speaker, I mean, speaker, Bill yeah, Barton. Yeah. yeah, Daryl Barton. He doesn't go in and say, oh, please, don't give me three years in jail in everything like you had to do against this absurdity of poking a marijuana cigarette or something. He's challenging them with legal papers, and they're backing up. They're backing up. You know, I'm sorry, I'm, I, I'm sorry, Miss Joe, but I'm wondering, did it, does anyone talk about, um, uh, for, from what, from what I've read, that when Giuliani became mayor, uh, he increased sixfold how, how, the amount of people that uh, were arrested for marijuana compared to Dickens. And that's yeah, amazingly, um, Bloomberg, I think, has increased it since Giuliani. I think he's really, arresting more mean, people every day for marijuana. I think you're free from marijuana. marijuana. Right. I don't know. Really? The population yeah. is I haven't different. had that impression. You may know better than me, though. The war on drugs, I think, is sure for a lot of the prisons. 
and they're making money. That's a growth this industry. Like so that fits into the GDP. Thing, so. And if you're making money, then you got people who are going to come in as running dogs to the system, and they don't have any alternative ways. So people go along with the There were people. There's always people who want to be sick of it. Yeah, they want to be. They want to be sick of it. They'll get some scrums. They'll get some scrums from the table. They'll be part of it. They'll fit in. It's also more convenient. But if somebody is questioning it all, then that's where you have trouble. But there's no, they don't, they're not worthy. Uh, the institutions, it's, it's, it's too big. It's education. It's everything. Every single institution, the architecture, the way things are set up, education, all our institutions are out of date with what is required for a liberated order of the human society. What are they going to do? Education, they're teaching people to be subservient to a uh, authority figure. I don't blame the kids for not going to school. What are they going to do? Either. Oh, I hate it. All, it's school. all I hate of our institutions are authoritarian. Yes. They're all in, it's all military model. Really, and then it's just, and it all comes down to economics, doesn't it, Kai? Yeah, but it also comes down to us taking on some real reality, and that is, can New York be closed and house itself? We can say it's all there. But the reality is, you live in this big, I'm just taking New York City. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You live in here, landless. Yeah. You don't have land to really grow food on. You put it on the house top, you can grow some in the basement. The question is, can you grow enough to feed yourself year round? Well, can you store enough for the future? And yeah, if it's idiosynchronizing the problem down to the point where nobody can ever do anything, that's what they want you to think. And it's not, it's not the people, it's the intellectuals. I understand that Harold. Sumner's is gone. Who the fuck is going to come in and give us some idea of economic policy? Who is going to say that there's a new education curriculum for kids so they can learn to grow food? What do you learn to do? Whatever what do they have to do? What do kids have to learn? What do kids have to learn? They learn how to talk at their mother's knee. Why hasn't Google already got the iPod out with all the languages instantly translatable so everybody can communicate with them? That would be useful. Why don't they have a... Why, multimedia is the way to communicate anymore. Why are we going all with books and strung out logic and all the kind of things that we have built into our institutions? They're all outdated. They're made us consumers. No, well, we cannot yeah, protect it with repeat ourselves. It's the intellectuals that are falling down on the job. Yeah, but Where is there anybody saying anything the, the that's school, relevant my, to a liberated order? About critical thinking. It's not about information overflux. Yes, there is information overflux. The school has to teach the children how to filter information, how, how to figure out what's relevant, what's irrelevant. Because information is is way bigger than that. That's right, and it's going exponential. What they should give is everybody a computer and a, 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 a optic generated thing, and then just, do you see what's coming? It's finally coming. Real, honest to God, meaningful programs are finally coming through on television. You know one of the best channels that there is of the 500 that are on the cable? Our TV is good, but no, you wonder where they get some of the best stuff? It's the military channel. You watch, 112. Military channel, they have really good programs. Like what? Uh, well, all kinds of things about the Second World War with actual footage and everything like uh -huh. that, and scholars who were talking about geostrategic thinking and all this kind of stuff. The point is, or the science, even the history channel has good stuff now. So you should put that, give that available to the kids. The kids don't want to read a long book. They don't want to be linear. We're going multimedia. We're going multisensorial. The kids, leave the kids alone. Why would you want to put them in an institution where they have to listen to some authority figure and do what that person says to do? They're teaching them to be slaves, so they'll fit into a corporate community and do what the senior vice president. That's exactly what's happening. And so what therefore, I, the kids cannot survive for What I would say is support them in what they do. Support them in what you are saying. I think that's really good. Well, there's no place for the kids to go. You got all these adults trying to turn them into wage slaves. Thank and you. Instead, and count. And, and then if you get into academia, it's all specialized. Yes. So you get a, you get a degree, and nobody's thinking about everything. No, there's no comprehension anywhere. You know, it's all tunnel vision specialization. My issue is really important, or this is really important, or a dissertation on the use of the blue perfect pen for the French. French literature you know, in the thirteenth century in the south of the country. They know all about that, but they don't know anything else about the old past. You know the leader. There's no comprehension. Let me say Harry, something you know important. Elisa. Say something important, Joseph. That, uh, uh, relates to us here. 
Mm. Okay. You have seen that Barbara walked out. No, she had to probably go home. No, 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 no. She walked out because something. What we were saying about this Babaguchi and whatever it's called. You should get that day. My dinner shot. Is it something like that? No, no, no. I don't know how you said that. What Harold was saying. Tim Harold had these things. Don't forget one thing that if he would have the atomic bomb, he would consider dropping it on Israel. However, since in Israel there are so many Arabs, Palestinians, I think that he would have a second thought. Yeah, he killed drop the bomb just because of that. Not to kill the Jews, but to kill the Palestinians who also live there. So uh, what I'm to they've say, never, Iran has never attacked anyone in 500 years. You think I'm going to get once for the Palestinian? Notice what your country is doing. Well, he's basing it on how concept that he had a question. Well, he's got a point. Ladies and gentlemen, order! Order in this House of Commons! The point is the most important thing. What we are doing here is not having a dialogue. Right. We have a we get a discussion, we are considering things, and at the end, everybody will stay with one's own opinion, and nothing will happen. What is important is, is that through the dialogical process, first of all, she would have never uh, walked out. There would be a deep understanding of all that which we don't understand unless we exchange in depth not just opinions, but the psychosomatic, so to say, consciousness. And the feelings he's talking yeah, about. Yeah, the feelings yeah. he's talking about. Yeah. And then a group like this could actually accomplish something. Because through this real dialogue, based on what Martin Luther calls the I Dao relation. God bless you. We see people as human beings and not just as, you know, mechanisms. Object. If we can do that, then any group, this group also, would become the leading factor or the catalyst producing something that would generate and affect the public. I really believe that that would be possible. It's not possible because we don't have this biological synthesis. I think there was some no, there was there was some, no, no, there was some dialogue. There was some dialogue. Yeah, yeah, there, there, I, I there was some dialogue. dialogue. But, 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 but it's, it's a great dialogue. That's a great dialogue. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a multi-log. It's a group it's discussion. We're not doing bad. My friend's downstairs. My friend's downstairs. You gonna go? No, my friend's downstairs. We're gonna bring her up. Yeah. Maggie, go down and get her. Oh, thanks. Oh, that's okay. I'll go. I'll go with. Hundred opinions instead of one, instead of actually coalescing into. No, it's not an opinion. As a matter of fact, silence. This is usually one of the most uh, effective uh, factors in producing this dialogical awareness. One of the most what factors? Science is, silence is usually one of the most uh, effective, 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 effective uh, factors. Effective factors in, uh, you know, because uh, sometimes you have to digest uh, internally what is suddenly being Yes, yes, I, I, I agree. There need to be pauses, there need to be you cannot, quiet moments. You cannot fight for your opinion, for your rightness, for, you know, for justice. You can do it, but that's not the dialogue, you see? Yeah. So, you have to listen to the other person to get outside. It's not so easy. Sometimes you cannot have the dialogue. There is a, uh, there are certain prerequisites. But sometimes you could. For example, I think that because everybody in this group is fair-minded and so to say idealistically, although not so much materialistic, but idealist, idealistic uh, oriented person, you see, so the chances that a dialogue could develop is possible. But, uh,
know, it's, uh, you have to somehow have a facilitator unless it spontaneously just develops, uh, you know, through the, through the, how should I say, But suppose we limit in our dialogue. We limit we limit the discussion to the benefit, the comparison of a Bendix dishwasher to a uh, General Electric dishwasher, and talk carefully about how the dishwasher, the you know, has issues that have no substance. Keeps it easy. Well, people can talk about. It. I think the Bendix washer is better. I think the General Electric. Better. And that's the level at which we talk about. Everybody, this is my friend Frederic Montero. Hi, Frederic, come in. This is Harold Chan. Hi, pleasure. You can sit there if you want to. On the couch, you can sit down for a couple of minutes. We're just finishing up a dialogue. A multi-log. A dialogue. And uh, we started out on drugs. Weeks. You weren't here. It was all about drugs and what's going on with the drug thing with Joe Barton. I like Joe Barton because he, he confronts the system. I think we need to confront this human condition rather than just accept it. That's what I'm saying, Joseph. How do you do dialogue if you're going to, if a, a unmovable force meets an irremovable object and things? What, you know, or, yeah, whatever. You know. I mean, you, how, can you dialogue? You have to have a basis of understanding or something for a real dialogue. No. Or? It you, he was the representative. It starts. Of the it starts. He was the representative. Yeah, he was in America. Yeah. It he was an associate. It starts from nothing. Well, in other words, uh, it starts with I don't know. Okay. Not that's sinner, you know. That's, once, that's once sinner. you say you know, forget about it. That's the best thing. Because the openness and the uh, intent not to slip into a discussion. You let something happen. Like, for example, uh, I was running biological groups in the form of encounter groups. Uh -huh. And 90 percent of times it did not end up as a time. Yeah? But sometimes it did. And then we, we might have started out with some really deep personal critical issues that people had. And then we ended up with the uh, rights of Native Americans. The, uh, the what? Oh, the, the sex life of naked America? Oh, native. The rights of native. Oh, I thought you said the sex yeah. life of naked America. <laughs> 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 well, one from mine. That's where we ended up? <laughs> different <laughs> different <laughs> ball. <game. laughs> okay. Sorry, Dave. <laughs> yeah, I know. We're going to a dialogue. <laughs> See, now, they now they we're down to it. Yeah. Stop talking about the issues. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like this gentleman. Angry or real, you know, really do something. But honestly, that's like, you know, the, uh, the outer edge of something that could lead. That does what? It could lead to a dialogue. But there's much more to it. I, I wrote the whole article about it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but I, I think self-righteousness has to be broken. That's the only way is actually to clutch. So you have to clutch. The only thing you cannot do with a dialogue is walk out, I believe. Okay. You, tell, you have to stay until until the end. Yeah, and you, no I matter mean, how displeased you are with what you hear, no matter how hard the conflict is, you have to endure it. Otherwise, there's no gravity synthesis. You see, you have a dialogue with the people for everything. This is psychosomatic relationship. 
What we you know is art. Uh, We're going to get an elephant next week. Yeah. <laughs> I lived there for six weeks. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to. Yeah. Well, we started off with drugs and ended up with naked sex. Yeah. Uh, I thought we were going to end up talking about the did you get well, well, I think we're going this weekend. No. But this gentleman has been waiting. Yeah, I know. Kai is a, is a serious world scholar. Patient, patient. And he is a world scholar of uh, the Holocaust among other things. He did a dissertation on that. He's from Germany. And he's also a proponent of Henry George, which was a very progressive... You always uh, make me blush, Harold. No, it's true. <laughs> and you've got a new book that you're going to try to let me be aware of, really. But what do you think of all this nonsense? Uh, well, I'm enjoying Is Henry George things. still relevant? Thanks for... Uh, sorry to be late. Sorry I missed part of the way. Was it Joe yeah, it's on tape. It'll be up on YouTube tomorrow. I'll check it out. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know this uh, denial stuff. There are people in New York who deny that 9-11 happened. I agree with you, okay, the, what happened in, in Iraq is much more severe than what happened in, in London. I mean, I'm sure you all have experienced this. My brother-in-law of mine saw the second plane. So the thing happened. I would trust my brother. I had no other opinions on that. And does it matter if 3,000 people get unjustly killed or the million people get unjustly killed or what does it matter? You don't think it would matter if the United States government was involved in it? Oh, it does. It does. Who, 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 whoever it was. But now you say the United States government, let's say that the United States government was involved, then wouldn't the president have looked a little better on that day? I found you look even more not intelligent than you. Yeah, the six minutes of silence was, it was amazing. And, and if he had Especially been that first shot of the day in the school, if he, he had been, like a what, is he, child. what is he reading the happy go to kids? He's the president. I mean, I have nothing against the president working with kids, but if he had been the mastermind behind that, wouldn't he have been like the glorious, uh, whatever it was? No, he was in the right place Kai, at the right time. Kai, it wouldn't Nothing have like said with some children. He's innocent. Kai, just think, yes. first he's a bad actor. And first of all, it, wasn't in, it wasn't in the script. It wasn't in the script. So something went wrong. He had to prove to them that he was getting the impression across to you. I mean, no, whatever, no. whatever the merits of any of the 9-11 truth stuff, though, I think there, I, I think there are two two strains basically. There are the people who think um, that uh, that Bush and Andrew Cheney and and, and and company were actively involved, and there's also the people who think that they just had a good idea that it was going to happen and purposely did nothing. Um, I think that I think that last option is more plausible, if anything is plausible. But again, um, I think it's, uh, as I said before, I think it's just going to absorb a lot of smart people and good people's minds for, for decades and they're going to pay attention to this and they should be paying attention to what's happening presently and in the future. Do you think we're going to bomb Iran? Do you think Israel is going to bomb Iran? Like they did with uh, Iraq, with the atomic reactor uh, on their own. Um, and that, the thing you worry about is the unleashing of the weapons of the United States of America. It's nothing rational. It's the irrational thing that could be that. Because the United but, States of America is the major threat in the world. But we, we, we've gotten the Pax Americana through that. I beg we, your pardon? We have gotten the Pax Americana. We've gotten like the Pax Britannica, like the Pax Romana, the peace. The, the strong piece, mm -hmm. and, and now we're going back to why there, there's this evidence that Roosevelt and Churchill knew about Pearl Harbor, and never would this country have entered the fight against fascism in Europe if, if that hadn't happened. I mean, all, yeah. often that happened. Okay. Yeah. Now that's a, yeah. that's a stronger cause to say that Pearl Harbor happened so the United States enters the war. Uh, yeah, it wasn't politically feasible until it happened. Oh, yeah, but we went all the way back to the early 90s. Uh, six feet under, right? so what for? Who is six feet under? 800,000 uh, Iraqis, which... Only 800,000? I'm, I'm, I'm trying to downplay it. So it's, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's in between Iraq and uh, I think and that, Afghanistan. I think a million five, that's a lot of people. Don't forget the 500,000 that died under sanctions to Iraq. Yeah, we had them all run and coming up until the invasion, yeah. They were dead. Their sanctions are terrible. They were bombing them every day. And, by, and that country of Iran is surrounded by military. Everywhere. It's all military. It, you know, it's, 
a little bit faster. So, so the, the, the issue is not really, I mean, let, let's say that they didn't know, let's say these planes were cargo planes, they were not passenger planes, mm -hmm. but the whole point is what was trying to be sold to us afterwards, that's right. the important thing. Right. They tried to sell us a war, the war in based Russia. on that. And there was Wolfram 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 that's Wolfram the suspicious part. Wolfram if they Wolfram didn't try to sell anything, then... Why is it we always go into wars after something is bombed? Right. We bombed in 1900, <laughs> it was 1901, we bombed our own two ships, and we accused the Spanish of we going to take Cuba. 1898 of 1901, something between 1898 and 1901. Remember the main. Remember the main. Yeah, 40 years later, we say, oh, we did that. Then, 1917, there is this fabulous ship that's on its way out here in this tank, on its way outside of Ireland. Boom. We have nothing to do with it. It was some crazy German who was up, what are you two, whatever. You both. But it's always, we have these, these bum stuff. I think that the American people, Mick Bay has never mentioned he's executed just before this stuff, and he and makes a famous statement before he goes. James Earl No, no Mick Bay. Oh, okay. Mick Bay, who bombed Oklahoma, Oklahoma, which has the same MO as the World Trade Center. Okay. World Trade Center is just bigger. So, uh, uh, the whole mess doesn't make any sense to me. I think that what we need to do is say to the world that we're going to pick up what the UN too has issues. The UN is occupying Haiti, but it's destroying people every day. But it covers for rape That's and everything I else. I know I, I said on the International yeah, Commission, studied it last year. Yeah. Uh, we are in a time when we have to say, as, as people in the United States of America, since we live in the most powerful of these crazy states, it is our responsibility to come together as a people and take charge. Well, you sound like you can run in the Tea Party. You can run in the Tea Party. I don't want to say that. You want to run in the Tea Party ticket? It's the Green Party. No, don't let me tell you. No, I knew you were the Green Party. Talk party. the crazy talk. Because oh, well, there, if I told there. him that a black man, green tea. Green tea. A yeah. black man tossed that tea in the harbor, led the group of five that tossed that tea in the That's harbor, right. and Adam. all go home right. because they're racist. Yeah. So let us let us talk about how we, as a people, address these issues. There's a big march on Washington this weekend. Is it? Yeah, it is. It, oh, they wow. they just raided. I don't know how we're gonna. I know, they so just raided those places in Minneapolis and in Chicago. Chicago. They raided the okay. FBI. Okay. It was reported today. They raided the uh, and there were people preparing for that march in Chicago and the in The raid, that's what I'm saying. FBI. These things are going on. And what did they do with this book? They just took a book off the... Uh, they off took the, it, they, they took it. They burned it up? I don't know what it sounds like. I don't know what, but all I know is that they're, they're raiding, and but they're, they're using this, this 1852 raids. Under the future, well, 1850 to 1852, under the future, slave slave it's a fugitive slave act, mm -hmm. an operation again, right. and they're just moving about, arresting people. Among them are Lynn Stewart, who's yeah. sitting in jail. Oh. All of this smells in the same way, and looks, smells, and sounds in the same way as the fugitive slave raids that begun yeah. in 1850, right. with the fugitive slave, with, right. with the compromise in California. You're talking about now? Well, yes, now, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, same, it's, it's the same thing. thing. It's, yeah. it's the same yeah. thing, yes. Yeah. And I, I think we need to be talking about that because it's our nation where we live that's just that's being depicted as the monster. I need it. I don't want any blood on anything of mine. Yeah. In Iraq. Yeah. Yeah. And yet I feel I have blood on my hands. In Iraq. Mm -hmm. Child all children all in Iraq. Cody Clark is responsible in the United States because I live here. And I may scream and yell, but until I can reach a critical mass mm -hmm. with the American people. It says we will withdraw from all foreign wars, take out all of our bases out of Africa, all that 750 bases, close the bases in Japan, close the bases in Germany, bring our troops home and reintegrate them into the society. Why are those troops still in the Good Germany? question. Hey, Kai, you, you, you understand things pretty well. We were just, we were just talking about that the other day. Um, there's a film out, what is it, The Women of Berlin, how the Stalinist troops raped the women after the yeah. occupation. Yeah. That's, every occupational force does that. I grew up outside Frankfurt, and the, the GIs raped the women. Yes. And it was hushed up. They did? Really? Yes, it was yes. hushed up. And maybe, maybe there was a disciplinary action within the army, and the local population knew about it, but it was hushed up. I did that. I did that. The, American, the American GIs raped the German prisoners? And, and the Japanese. We're it's just going to call agreements among men. There's no answer. Uh, the <laughs> only answer is we have to get rid of all men under the age of 70. And then that raping wouldn't take place. It's all young men doing that. Well, I think men should Oh, no. I don't think oh, men should no. Vote. 
Old men get young men to do their work. Okay, okay, we'll get rid of all of them. Just take the vote away. Oh, he's talking about his mother. Well, that's well, that's here. Well, well, of course, there's always the yes, snip, 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 is the same. snip, Wars snip. are made by all old men. They send <laughs> young men into war, so then the young men die, and the old men, the old lynchers, kind of the young men. That's, wow. that's why I want this take on history. Well, she has a point. That's a very famous take, by the way. <laughs> can, you, can you tell us what your uh, new book is about? No, it's not his new book. He's written a forward. Oh, what is the what is the, the book that you wrote for? We are. Um, talk, about, talk about communism. There was a man who predicted 12 years before it happened that the Iron Curtain would come down. And he was the head of the think tank behind the East German dictates. And he, he was a communist. He was, a, he was, a, he was a, a, a historian. And he got Andropov. There was before Gorbachev, there was Andropov. And Robert was the mentor of Robert. You're in Robert. Yes. And I'm the uh, um, secretary. Uh, uh, he secretary. died, didn't he die like, right away? So he had, there was a, there was a thought period in, in Moscow. And in that thought period, there were, in, in all these other countries, there were people who wanted to have a liberation. And I mean, for 150 years, you know that as well as I do, Karl Marx had the monopoly on social justice because capitalism wasn't doing it. Nobody else was doing it. So he monopolized this whole thing. So this man is sitting there and he gets the real figures from Moscow. And he, he calculates it and he finds out the system is going to crash on March, January 1919. He said that 10, 12 years before it happened. He was wrong by a month and a half. For prediction. From when? When did he predict it? In the 80, late, late uh, 1970s. So wow. if you're wrong, a month and a half, 99% of, of the public, 99% of the politicians who were five minutes after it happened said, we have been saying it for decades. Nobody said it. In the summer, everybody was saying, in the summer of 89, we were saying, this communist system is going to last another hour. CIA everybody, everybody, everybody was So this guy, it's not only inside information, it's an intuition, this system will crash. And he wrote books about it. It's a very good life still alive. It was started out, among other people, by American investment. That's it. That's a whole thrill. And this book is coming out in the ocean. And we asked me to write a comment. Did you get a copy that you could let me have? It's, it's Are you going to leave with me tonight? I have a copy for you. I'm so happy. <laughs> I'm so happy. It's like Red Sand, but then it's just gone. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's gone. The book is called De Demythologizing Marx. Okay. The book that shattered communist release in Europe. Okay. Whatever happened to Gorbachev, I never hear anything. We tried. Well, I think he's, uh, he's supposed to view the talk as a unification coming up. The third of uh, October is a unification of Germany, and he's, he's giving the talk in front of him. What do you mean unification of Germany? I don't know. Well, they celebrate. After the Iron Curtain came down, you know, yeah. they didn't have a unification. What year? It was in, what, 89, I think, 99. Officially, it was 91. And they made that into like a holiday or something? Yeah. Oh, I see. That's the of July. October 3. You remember when the wall came down? I remember the wall came down. I remember the time. Well, that's in, well, we had, while we had that topic, not to, not to monopolize, but while we had the topic, I, I became a reporter in 1989, being at the Brandenburg Gate when the thing opened, and I have still been somewhat possible there's a stamp from the Stalinist police. And we, we rushed in from the west, and there was a big party, and nobody believed it would happen. And then people climbed up on the Brown Bouquet, which is like, I don't know, uh, 100 yards high. And it, like, we climbed up on the, yeah. on the, on the lightning rod, but if you like, 10 years later, I looked at it, it it's a miracle nobody got crushed to death. It was, it was such an it's not 100 yards. It's a high building. It's a, I don't not say, it's 20, 20 stories, 15 stories. Really? And, that was, um, were you, 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 were you, you were there, there when it happened? I was on top of the gate and I was the only guy apparently he could write and then that started the journalistic career. Wow. You were there the, 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 the that day night, that, that night it happened. Well, I'll be damned. Do you have a were, chunk? Do you have a chunk of the wall? No, I, I just <laughs> I had my, I had my, my show, my radio show. But I mean, you didn't grab it. Do you have the record? Do you have the tape connected to the Yankee Stadium? Good for you. $80 a pop. Maybe they can do it. Oh, yeah. Did they really? Oh, geez.
Well, I'm really glad I can get that book. We'll do a program later in October. I think we can read it. And that'd be good. That's very exciting. And give us a quick resume. Where, are, uh, where does Henry George stand in terms of informing the intellectual economics now in 2010? Well, thank you for asking that. You, you, you mentioned Asimov. I think Asimov is a super brilliant guy. And the reason why he didn't understand economics is not because it's not smart enough, but because we've been consistently lied to. Isaac Asimov? Isaac Asimov. Yeah, 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 we've done a program. But Harold, and Harold gave me the chance to speak on this show a couple of times about the subject. That, that what happened in the in the early years about the business getting into the teaching on the position on so in in the 18th and 19th century, like classical economics, classical economics is so simple that you can explain it to your kid brother in half an hour. It's land, labor, capital, yields, uh, rent, wages, and interest, and there's clear definition and, and distinction. And Henry George says, you use the rent of the land, the land was made by nobody. Imagine we are getting charged for air we breathe. We, we get charged for air we breathe, by the time we run out of quarters, we're dead. Yeah? So you cannot, air, water, food, shelter, and clothing are life's necessities. And nobody should be deprived of them. And Henry George would amend the American Constitution, not between the pursuit of happiness and the access to land. Land meaning all natural. Does, does yeah. land include natural resources? Yeah, it's, it's land was the old term, yeah. the classical economics term for natural resources. Now, okay. what happened at the end of, Henry George went for mayor of New York twice. He was a very charismatic speaker, very humble guy. Average Joe would have would enjoy something like this enormously. Ran for mayor, this is the first time he ran against uh, Teddy Roosevelt and against uh, some guy from Tillany Hall. Oh, and they, okay. Thank you. And they, they, they found the ballot boxes with his name and running, going down, pulling down the Hudson. So it, it's mentioned actually in the, in the Guide to New York. In the book, it's, it's mentioned. Uh, oh, really? It's mentioned. That, that election is mentioned. Oh. And then, uh, the <laughs> second, second election, 97, he, he died a few days before that, which was just exhausting. And so what they did is they looked at this, the monopolists, the speculators, the people who are creating an artificial scarcity, the people who are trying to, 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 to score the distribution system. And they said, we cannot have such clarity in rural economics. So they changed classical economics. They smashed it. There's a book called, a book called Corruption of Economics by Mason Gaffney. Economics professor at Riverside in, in California that traces what happened after Henry George's death. They, they said, We're going to smash classical economics, we're going to smash the, 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 the categories, we're going to smash the clarity, and we're going to obfuscate it. And now you have everything's capital. Nature doesn't even factor. Uh, it's an externality. Thank you. Yeah. Now, externality, if you don't have air to breathe, you're dead. Yes, yeah, that's true. So, pretty big externality. So, also in classical economics, ethics and philosophy was part of it. Neoclassical economics, which came, neoclassical economics has nothing to do with classical economics. Neoclassical economics came, took ethics and philosophy out, and took nature out. In the University of Chicago School? Yes, everything is, now everything is, everything is, is capital. We have human capital, we have natural capital, financial capital. So nobody understands anything anymore because it's all obfuscated. And uh, we're talking about um, nature, nature being brutal, like we with you. There was this film by Bernard Herzog, Grizzly Bear Watcher. There's a guy who watched the Grizzly Bear for 20 years, oh. and one day the Grizzly Bear ate him. Grizzly Bear. Yeah, and one day, they, that's a true story. One day the Grizzly Bear ate him. And, and the, the nature watcher was thinking, oh, I've been with that grizzly bear for 20 years. That's my buddy. That's my friend. And the grizzly bear thought, I was, here goes my breakfast. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason why I tell this story in the past is because <laughs> I don't want to be human capital. I don't want to be breakfast of some venture capitalist. I don't want, I, I mean, if you do, I don't. So go back to classical economics, uh, de obfuscate the whole system, make it clear, explain it to your kid brother, have the kid brother explain it to Asimov, and have a new system. More social justice. Who, who are the people, the voices, the names that are associated with that obfuscation? J.P. Clark as well. We have, we have the whole Austrian school. Uh, Would uh, that be Jean Peter? Uh, or no? uh, uh, Ben Bebach, Van uh, Wieser, uh, uh, all these guys. But not Jean Peter? Yeah, Jean Peter. Well, Jean Peter is, is a two edged sword. Jean Peter goes both ways. But Billy Wilder always said about Austria, Billy Wilder was Austrian. 
the writers said the, the director. The, the, the director. The director. The director. He said, the, the Austrians are trying to, and he lost, he lost family in the Holocaust. He, he stayed, he stayed, he, he made some of the funniest movies ever made. Absolutely. So he said, the Austrians are trying to tell us that Beethoven was Austrian, who was German, and they're trying to tell us that Hitler was, no, Beethoven is, is Austrian and Hitler was German, mm -hmm. Hitler was Austrian. So that's the Austrian. The Russians give us the marginalist school. The marginalists are saying you have a choice. Economics is individual choice. That's that's an elite philosophy. That's the philosophy of the funk system of, of some noble soul. You can choose. Somebody else is working for you. Every human being on the planet needs air, water, food, shelter, and clothing in, in varying degrees. Sex. Yeah, you can add, you can add, you can that's mm -hmm. Maslow's, 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 Maslow's pyramid of needs. Of course, if you don't have land, you fall into, into space. But if you don't have, no, you don't have air, you're dead in five, ten minutes, you don't have water, you're, you're dead in three days, you don't have, and so you go down the line. So there's no individual choice involved in that. We have seven million people on the planet soon. All of these need, have these needs need to be fulfilled. That needs to be made a human right, not that somebody else works for me, but that I have an opportunity to work for myself, and I need access to these resources. And you need access to the resources in an and economic sense? Of course. And where did Keynes fit in? Oh, but let her go ahead. Sister, we need to Okay, a question came to me when you were talking how Henry George, when he passed away, the system changed and became obfuscated. Yeah. And yeah. such. And Perhaps you can clarify something for me. When one buys a piece of property here in America, not a co-op or a condominium, but a piece of property, a land with a house on it, yes. just land and such and such, you're given the rights and titles to this land. Yes. This land is yours. Yes. And there's always there a paragraph with the exception of all mineral rights, all this thing, this is that to be found underneath the land. Yes. And air rights, too. Or is that no, they don't put the air rights in oh, okay. And so I'm asking myself, who gets it? Number one, who put it in and how far before, because land has a tendency to change hands, did that clause come into the original sale of the land? Okay, yeah. And Well, they're coming. They're going to be okay, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to let it go, right? No, no, no. Okay. Okay. Yes. They're coming around to a lot of ancient societies, ancient Egypt, Mesoamerican cultures, uh, all the First Nations, did not treat nature or land as private property. It was not treated by land because we all need a life by such justice. So this bill explained, it came with the Romans. The Roman law brought in the private property of land. And most societies, even most modern societies, have private property of land qualified. It's qualified, it's only for one generation, or you have a contract for 99 years, or whatever. I mean, imagine private property of land, some, some person has private property of land in perpetuity. Yes. You know what that means? In perpetuity, it means it, it presupposes physical immortality. What was the last time you saw somebody physically immortal? You can't just pass it on to heirs. Well, and that's, then you get into another issue, you get into the issue that it's right. available yes, to everybody who's not, it's unavailable to everybody yeah, who's right. not. You have to use it, it to contribute to an artificial scarcity. You have Prince Harry in England running around with a swastika on his arm yeah. at a costume party. The guy is like the third or fourth in line to the throne. British Crown and, and Catholic Church are probably the two richest landowners on the planet. The kid has never done anything in his life, and why is he the heir to that, all this wealth? Because Thousand years ago, some some forebear knocked the Scottish laird over the head, broke right. the skull. It's and they didn't do anything. And, 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 they, and they asked for yeah. assistance from the British government for uh, for for, uh, for the heating bill. I don't mm. know if you've heard of it. The heating bill? Yes. Yeah. 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 They applied for assistance for for uh, for the heating bill. Who did? The Queen of England. Yeah. I heard that. Yeah. yeah. That's so. I mean, the system is so antiquated. Now you have an. an, an, an <laughs> In Canada, in Canada, you had in Canada you had a, a crisis of government, so everybody stepped down. So what do you have? You had the Queen step in and, 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 and like like mediate the crisis of the government. I mean, this is like this stuff is hundred years uh, superannuated.
Well, listen, let me just interject in a sense here because I just looked at the tape and we got the third tape or third hour and we got about six minutes left of that. And I don't think I have another tape. So <coughs> we can continue on. We can talk all night if you want. It's okay. I don't care and everything. But what I'm saying is uh, we got about six minutes and anybody want to make any points or anything to round out this? We started out with drugs and ended up with sex, did we? No, we ended up with Roman law. But you know what I'm saying? Well, I'd, oh, I'd, Peter, like, I'd like speak to speak now or forever hold your peace, young man. I'd like to touch on what Maggie said, uh, which uh, which I think you, you're what you said kind of insinuates. I think that um, it's a great a great reason why oil should be nationalized everywhere. Uh, I think that's better. You, 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 you completely called the principle. Completely called the principle. Yes, absolutely. Um, I, I think um, just your. In addition to the things you said, we have a right to the oil, we have a right to uh, to, to, to the soil, and uh, we don't have a right to destroy it. Um, and I think if, uh, again, if only governments uh, uh, were in charge and you had campaign finance reform so the governments actually could represent the people. To me, that's the other thing. I think the most important issue in the world is campaign finance reform. Um, uh, nothing, uh, and almost no one ever talks about it. nothing is and, and it's just become even more dangerous where, where they, they, uh, the the uh, contributions are unlimited now. Yeah, it's me. Um, and uh, but no issue is more important than that. You can never have a have a, a the chance of uh, apprehending any kind of idea of a regular real democracy unless you, you uh, change campaign plan. Okay. Um, I would agree one hundred percent on that. Okay. But I would also like to Okay, we're going to do it in I, I, I like remember, it. get it in your mind. You're on TV now. Yes, six, I know. We had six minutes. So Stop talking. Please. Yes, yes. And <laughs> get your line straight. I just like Cut. to say very clearly that Let's feel it. <laughs> I agree with you. However, I think we need to leave that all in the ground. And we need to begin to talk about how we take advantage of all of the new technology that's accessible for solar, wind, and water, if necessary, um, vegetable production. But the oil itself needs to be returned to Mother Earth. We're being destroyed. We're destroying ourselves. I've been mean, hunting the belly of the Earth, and now the belly of the ocean. I can never be hunt. It's been shown it does. Okay, and it's on plates. Yes, it does. I have a point. In television, you get a thing like this. Well, go back. Yeah, it's too fast. What is the clock? Okay. okay. What is the clock? Okay. It's, what is the clock okay. What is the clock it's, it's about ticking yellow. You brought up before. What's the, it's what's ticking the, yellow. It's ticking yellow. But what's the clock say? 5721. 5721, we're going to be out to uh, one It says five one minutes. Uh, so go fast, everybody. Okay, you, you, brought up a point. you brought up a point before about letting children go uh, where they want to go in yeah. education. Yeah. And uh, there's Alita Salter, she's a primal person. She raised her children to have their feelings. When they're mad, they can fucking rage mm -hmm. and they can laugh, they can cry. And she's found, uh, with teaching other people, that it seems that when children reach about the age of seven. Children, few of them relatively, that there are in this world, they uh, achieve some state, a measure of independence where they still need home, but when it comes to the development of their brain, they get on it and they don't like absolutely need school. They right. might want to go to school, but they get on to subjects and they pursue them because they They're feel curious. interested. Shh. They're enthusiastic. They don't need any authority. Thank you, know, you. You know, you have to go to school. Yeah. They don't need it. Good point. And that, uh, uh, women, you've had your say. Josh, yeah, no, well, young. Okay, this wait. conversation has to be continued because there's so many points we didn't cover. I would like to have heard something about this uh, city that appeared in yesterday's Times that is fueled by, uh, by solar energy in the Arab desert. It was a full, full page article in the New York Times that was extremely fascinating and interesting. Okay. And we didn't, we didn't even touch upon it. Young lady, you came late, you haven't had a chance. Would you like to make any statement in about, about 30 seconds, what they call it, the sound light? No, you don't want to say anything? Wisdom. <laughs> what about you? Well, I, I would say that everything will depend at least on a kind of a conglomeration or synthesis of economics, psychology, politics, and ethics. And dialogue. 
but that's what we said. That's, that's, that's over there, you're right. Okay, yeah. Well, okay, well, that three that minutes. About wraps it up. Three minutes. I have one comment. Do it quick. How about please. the gentleman right here? Oh, oh sir. Right. Oh, please. Right. Quick. What does yes, the yes, yes. say? What does it say? We have two minutes, kiddos. What do you, how much is two. it? Two. 59 53. Go. For the viewers, go, 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 go. Shh. Value is on the demand side of the equation, not on the supply side. Thank you. So, value is created by the community, but it's ripped in the gutted system individually, privately. That's the biggest conundrum in economics. That's, That's right. why we have poverty. As long as we don't fix that, there's not going to be any solution to make social Okay, problems. I like Bucky Fuller, I like I, but I really like an economics a man named Louis Kelso who proposed a way in which you could get ownership into the hands of people as a way of distributing income. You're going to have to have an alternative way of distributing income or buying power to the masses of the world other than wages or labor. And that's the only way we do it for the vast majority of people. So they have to have some ownership of it as a way of having income. And when you get to where people are not, there will be within a generation, Don't forget people me. will not be thinking at all about economics because the system will be one that will be serving their needs and reasonable wants and even thoughts of uh, beyond that. So we transcend the scarcity. Thank and you. And when we wake up to that, we can have policies to reflect that. And that's the hope of the liberation. And we are really privileged to be alive at this particular moment in the evolution of the universe. So consciousness, are we out of time? Enough for Say me. Say something Go. Wise. Say uh, something wise. On the subject of land and it not being able to, our ownership not being able to access the mineral rights, the big issue now is the ocean and the mineral rights on the open ocean. It belongs to all of us. There's no ownership, etc., etc. However, the ownership for harvesting all the great mineral wealth of the ocean lays only with the industrial grade, who have the machinery and the capital in order to harvest those magnificent minerals on the ocean bed. Now, that, now who owns those minerals? A little plutocratic class. Mankind, never mankind. Mankind. You interrupted. Mankind? Or the, they do not. Or do not. the corporations no, they should. They should. that they gather. Do not. That's no. exactly. Let us be. They're all owned by our time. Hello. We're out? They, we are out. <laughs> all right, everybody. No point talking. If it's not on tape, it doesn't exist. So there's no point at all. Good. Talking, you know, so, no, we can go on talking, but we're out of tape. So <laughs> yeah, it's not know. there in the Akash. That never stopped chin chatter. I'm going to make it home. Yeah, yeah, well, it's getting that time. You guys have a mutual friend. You had a mutual friend.